Well, what's up, guys? Once again, it is early in the morning. I'm off tomorrow, so we're still drinking some Red Bull. Probably a terrible idea. But on the bright side, I um, figured I'd make another video for you. So, back behind the camera again. Today, uh, we're going to kind of go over uh, how do your pneumatics actually work together. Uh, what all is going on. Uh, we've got, let's see. Got some stuff rigged up down here. We'll take a peek at that in a second. But first, we need to cover something really, really basic. Um, obviously, how your hoses are set up on your front block uh, really depends on what kind of frame you're using. So, we're going to illustrate that real quick. This nice little cap groovy frame here. And, see... That timing hole right there, okay, up there in the trigger plate, right in here, that's where your timing rod would actually connect in. So if you look, with a slide frame, obviously that timing hole is moving backwards, which means the rod is moving backwards when we pull the trigger. So that's going to affect how we set up our front block and how we adjust our three-way. Now, on the flip side, if you're using a hinge frame, and there's our adjustment our timing rod hole as you can see that's going to push forward as we use that frame every time we cycle the gun that get, that's going to push forward there okay apologize for the bad angle um, i'm still using a little bent piece of wire for a camera stand so uh i'm going to move some stuff around and we'll look at a little bit more of this okay so Pan down a little bit. Like I said, we've got some stuff kind of set up here. This is basically how everything would be put together on your front block. Uh, those of you who familiar, are familiar with these guns will probably recognize the setup already. Uh, just a standard brass 2K WGP ram, nice little WGP bullet LPR, and a regular old 2K brass WGP three-way. So, uh, we're going to go over some basics. Obviously, this would all be plugged into your front block. Uh, your LPR would be sealed in, everything's uh, adjusted, whatnot. And we're going to go over kind of what's what's going on on your front block. So, like we talked about a couple videos before when we were covering the lower tube, uh, on your gun, obviously, the air goes through your ASA and your HPR, or high pressure regulator, comes up into the body where it's into your valve chamber and the front block. So, from the front block goes into the back of your low pressure regulator obviously if you want we can go over kind of how stuff works in there but essentially you make your adjustment here and that allows an even smaller adjustment um, of how much air is coming through so you know a typical high pressure regulator for most of these guns depending on your internals you may be running 200 to 400 psi into these things whereas on a low pressure regulator uh, you know you may be running 60 to 100 psi and obviously that's because it's a different application here we're running the low pressure air from our lpr into the center of our three-way so like we talked about before when you cycle that three-way all it's doing is distributing air to either side of that ram so if we look at this this would be set up basically uh like for a hinge frame so if we take the shaft here and you kind of look at where the O-rings sit corresponding with the barbs, this would be sitting at rest, air would be coming in the center and distributing to the back of the ram, holding our bolt assembly closed. And then we would set our timing lug, it would fire as we pull that trigger, since it's a hinge, it's going to push this forward. So that's what's actually going on in your three-way, is you're just moving the area at which that air is distributed. So now we fully pulled the trigger, this moves all the way up, and as you can see now, we're taking the low pressure air, putting it towards the front of the ram, which is gonna cycle the whole bolt assembly backward, recock the marker, then when you let go of the trigger, this moves back and brings the ram back forward, closes the whole assembly, and you're ready to fire and do it all again. Um, so there's a couple other variables. We will throw some other stuff up here so you can kinda see how that all works. Just a second. Trying to do jump cuts is difficult when you don't have a good camera. Um, 
I forgot to go over if we had this on a slider frame. Okay, so just like we talked about in the beginning, with a slide frame, obviously you're starting distributing to the front port and you're pulling backwards. So what we would do, and you've all seen diagrams of how to set up your hoses, if you were running this on a slide frame, you would take these two ram hoses and reverse them. So when we're sitting up here, we'd be distributing air from the front barb on the three-way to the rear barb on the ram, holding everything shut. And then as we pulled, gun fires, we go back here, now we would be sending air to the rear barb on the three-way, which would go to the front barb on the ram. Now one other thing, um, and this is kind of where the debate of whether people call them three ways or four ways, you have to remember part of this, both sides are going to have a little bit of air here. So currently there's air sitting in here. When we would distribute that to the other side, the air that's in this line has to go somewhere. So it's important to have the correct clearance and make sure you're using the right three way rod uh, because this has to vent outward. Um, oh, uh, some three ways like this WGP, basically just vented out the central bore, whereas uh, some like uh, the shock tech bombs or the Inception Designs, uh, UFCs, have little ports in the end, uh, and we'll cover why they have to have that. Uh, they have another O-ring in the way. So uh, that's the basics of how it would work with this kind of three-way. Uh, now let's set some other stuff up. Okay, so as you can see, we've swapped out our three-way here. Uh, this is a System X three-way. Uh, we still have the same connections going on back here. We still have our low-pressure regulator, as always, feeding air into the center barb on our three-way valve. But we wanted to take a look at what's different uh, between a standard 2K WGP and something like this. Well, obviously, you have two O-rings on the shaft versus three O-rings on the shaft. So what makes the difference and why do some of the fastest three-ways out there tend to be three O-ring shafts instead of two O-ring shafts? Uh, now, that being said, first and foremost, this old good old brass WGP three-way, these can be timed extremely tightly. So, uh, it's all personal preference. Once again, I'm just kind of trying to help some people understand a little bit. So, whereas in the other three-way, the way we had this all set up, uh, the first run was set up for a hinge frame where we would be pushing forward and then we talked about doing it with a slider frame. This is going to be the opposite just because of how it's plumbed. So if we look and obviously where your barbs are sitting and where your o-rings are sitting our air is coming in the center here and it would be sending it to the rear of the ram holding this all closed. So, as you pulled that slider frame, it would shift just a little bit, and now we've swapped. So now we have air coming in, and we're going to the front of the ram. Everything cycles. You let the trigger go, returns back forward, and now we're holding the whole assembly closed again. So we've re recocked the marker. So as you can see, the spacing is much closer. You don't have to move quite as far to be able to cycle this three-way from side to side. So this is why a lot of your, um, you know, your traditionally faster three-ways, the shock tech bombs and uh, ID UFCs and whatnot, tend to be this three O-ring shaft. Now, like I said before, uh, just before we stop talking about the brass three-way, you have to realize you, you do have air trapped on either side. So you can see, look down here, right by where their O-rings are sitting, there are vent holes here so that when this cycles and we switch back now this side since it can't get past this o-ring this side has a way to vent out the gas from that side of the ram and then when we cycle to the other side and everything is locked back into a closed position we still have a place for this air trapped on the side of the ram to come out and vent out through those holes so now if we were to do this on a hinge frame Obviously, we'd be pushing forward, so we would be, again, swapping these two hoses. So the front would go to the rear, and the rear would go to the front. We'd be sitting about here, 
So like I said, the front barb here would be distributed to the back, holding everything closed. You'd pull the trigger, it'd shift forward, and now our rear barb would be connected to the front. So that's how everything would cycle. Um, so really, that's that's pretty much all your it, it, this going on on your uh, front block. That's how pretty much all of them work together. Um, even if we get to like solenoids, solenoids are essentially just a small uh, electrically operated um, three-way. So all it is is doing the same thing. It's shifting air in one way or another to cycle that ram. Um, so that's kind of the basics. Uh, when you're timing, obviously, like I said, let's let's uh, pretend again that this is on a slider frame so that everything looks correct with our hose. But what you're looking for is, let's say my o-ring is sitting over here closer to this far right barb. I now have to pull a little further to be able to get that to cycle. So if I can time this to where it is that center ring is right up on that middle barb without leaking now I have a very short distance to pull that trigger to be able to cycle this. So th that's, that's what you're adjusting when you're actually adjusting the three-way uh, the coupler or in this case just the three-way shaft itself because uh, this is threaded you don't need a coupler on this one uh, but that, that's what you're adjusting, and so you're trying to find that spot where, you know, let's say my O-rings are sitting here, and as I barely move that trigger, my marker fires, and then I'm shifting and recocking. So you're trying to get those two processes to happen pretty close in sync. And that's how you get a real uh, tightly timed, uh, snappy feeling marker. Um, there's other stuff that goes into it, obviously, but uh, so that's a basic run over of how do your pneumatics work? How do they all work together? How do they make this marker work? Um, once again, guys, you know, big thanks for uh, listening. And if there's anything else you guys want to talk about or have questions about, um, I'll probably still be drinking too much Red Bull early in the morning. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks, guys.